Welcome to this lesson on how leaders influence people, and the range of influencing tactics used by successful leaders in high-performing organizations. As a starting point, let's be clear on the difference between power and influence. Power is the ability to impose your will on others, whereas influence is the ability to deeply affect behaviors and beliefs. Effective leaders use influence rather than power to achieve their objectives. Leaders who use influence motivate their employees, and motivated employees are more productive. Leaders who use power compel their people to carry out tasks, while leaders who use influence enlist commitment from team members in a shared vision. Here are two well-known leaders who clearly illustrate these differences. Starting at infancy, we all try to get others to do what we want. We learn early what works in getting us to our other goals. Instead of crying and throwing a tantrum, we may figure out that smiling and using language causes everyone less stress, and brings us the rewards we seek. By the time you hit the workplace, you have had vast experience with influence techniques. You have probably picked out a few that you use most often. Researchers have identified distinct influence tactics, and we will focus on nine influence tactics in this lesson. These include, rational persuasion, inspirational appeals, consultation, ingratiation, personal appeal, exchange, coalition techniques, pressure, and legitimating techniques. Rational persuasion includes using facts, data, and logical arguments to try to convince others that your point of view is the best alternative. This is the most commonly applied influence tactic. Effective rational persuasion includes the presentation of factual information that is clear and specific, relevant, and timely. Across studies summarized in a meta-analysis, rationality was related to positive work outcomes. Inspirational appeals seek to tap into our values, emotions, and beliefs to gain support for a request or course of action. Ask not what your country can do for you, ask what you can do for your country. When President John F. Kennedy said this, he appealed to the higher selves of an entire nation. Effective inspirational appeals are authentic, personal, big thinking, and enthusiastic. Consultation refers to the influence agents asking others for help, indirectly influencing or planning to influence another person or group. Consultation is most effective in organizations and cultures that value democratic decision-making. Ingratiation refers to different forms of making others feel good about themselves. Ingratiation includes any form of flattery, done either before or during the influence attempt. Research shows that ingratiation can affect individuals. For example, in a study of resumes, those resumes that were accompanied with a cover letter containing ingratiating information, were rated higher than resumes without this information. Other than the cover letter accompanying them, the resumes were identical. Personal appeal refers to helping another person because you like them, and they asked for your help. We enjoy saying yes to people we know and like. Our famous psychological experiment showed that in dorms, the most well-liked people were those who live by the stairwell. They were the most often seen by others who entered and left the hallway. The repeated contact brought a level of familiarity and comfort. Therefore, Personal appeals are most effective with people who know and like you. Exchange refers to give and take in which someone does something for you, and you do something for them in return. The rule of reciprocation says that we should try to repay, in kind, what another person has provided us. The application of the rule obliges us and makes us indebted to the giver. Coalition tactics refer to a group of individuals working together, toward a common goal to influence others. Common examples of coalitions within organizations are unions that may threaten to strike if their demands are not met. Coalitions also take advantage of peer pressure and influences as allies to convince someone to think, feel, or do something. This tactic is also extremely popular among advertisers and businesses that use client lists to promote their goods and services. The fact that a client bought from the company is a silent testimonial. Pressure refers to exerting undue influence on someone to do what you want, or else something undesirable will occur. This often includes threats and frequent interactions until the target agrees. Research shows that managers with low referent power tend to use pressure tactics more frequently than those with higher referent power. Pressure tactics are most effective when used in a crisis situation, 
and when they come from someone who has the other's best interests in mind, such as getting an employee to an employee assistance program, to deal with a substance abuse problem. Legitimating tactics occur when the appeal is based on legitimate opposition power. By the power vested in me, this tactic relies upon compliance with rules, laws, and regulations. It is not intended to motivate people, but to align them behind the direction. Obedience to authority is filled with both positive and negative images. Position, title, knowledge, experience, and a mean grant authority, and it is easy to see how it can be abused. Think about the number of commercials with doctors, lawyers, and other professionals who look and sound the part, even if they are actors. People want to be convinced that the person is an authority worth heeding. Authority is often used as a last resort. If it does not work, you will not have much else to draw from in your goal to persuade someone. The type of influence tactic used tends to vary based on the target. For example, you would probably use different influence tactics with your boss than you would with a peer, or with employees working under you. The directions of influence are upward and downward influence. Upward influence, as its name implies, is the ability to influence your boss and others in positions higher than yours. Upward influence may include appealing to a higher authority or citing the firm's goals as an overarching reason for others to follow your cause. Upward influence can also take the form of an alliance with a higher status person or with the perception that there is such an alliance. As complexity grows, the need for this upward influence grows as well. The ability of one person at the top to know enough to make all the decisions becomes less likely. Moreover, even if someone did know enough, the sheer ability to make all the needed decisions fast enough is no longer possible. This limitation means that individuals at all levels of the organization need to be able to make an influence decisions. By helping higher-ups be more effective, employees can gain more power for themselves and their unit as well. On the flip side, allowing yourself to be influenced by those reporting to you may build your credibility and power as a leader who listens. Then, during a time when you do need to take unilateral, decisive action, others will be more likely to give you the benefit of the doubt and follow. Downward influence is the ability to influence employees lower than you. This is best achieved through an inspiring vision. By articulating a clear vision, you help people see the end goal and move toward it. You often don't need to specify exactly what needs to be done to get there. People will be able to figure it out on their own. An inspiring vision builds buy-in and gets people moving in the same direction. Research conducted within large savings banks shows that managers can learn to be more effective at influence attempts. A group of managers received a feedback report and went through a workshop to help them become more effective in their influence attempts. Research also shows that the better the quality of the relationship between the subordinate and their supervisor, the more positively resistance to influence attempts are seen. Another consideration is peer influence. Peer influence occurs all the time. But, to be effective within organizations, peers need to be willing to influence each other, without being destructively competitive. There are times to support each other and times to challenge. The end goal is to create better decisions and results for the organization and to hold each other accountable. Executives spend a great deal of their time working to influence other executives, to support their initiatives. Rational persuasion is the most frequently used influence tactic, although it is frequently met with resistance. Inspirational appeals result in commitment 90% of the time, but the tactic is utilized only 2% of the time. The other tactics include legitimizing, personal appeals, exchanges, ingratiation, pressure, forming coalitions, and consultation. As a leader, you will need to make use of a range of influencing techniques depending on the nature of the situation and the people you are seeking to influence. Want to learn more about this subject? Then click on our website to view the full course. Why not subscribe and get access to free articles and special offers? Join the global career highway now.